welcome. Hello. Today, it's the Hero Factory Inspiration Series. Not the Bionicle Inspiration Series. I really should just rename it to the Construction Inspiration Series, but that's that's not as catchy as a name. Um, I don't even know if Bionicle Inspiration Series is that catchy of a name. It's a bit of a mouthful. But when, this is not critiquing the name of the show show. This is the show where we review Bionicle mocks from across the community. In this case, Hero Factory mocks, but it's all under that Construction Faction group banner, as it were, uh, and we, we talk about them. We say, hey, what are the cool techniques that are going on here? What do these builders do? What sort of stuff's happening? And we inspire you. Hopefully, if you're planning to build a Hero Factory mock or you're in a bit of a mocking block right now, you just don't know what to do. Taking a look at some other people's work can maybe get some of those creative juices flowing, give you some ideas, and get you going. So we're here to help you up, get you back on your feet, and join the battle. Sesame! Anyway, so let's begin. The first hero matri hero matri the first hero factory mock that we have today is by Minkai dash five seven two nine or underscore really, uh, and this is called Toxic Reaper. So a very different take on the original set. The original one's actually kind of like scrawny, which is great. Nothing wrong with being a scrawny dude, but uh, it's nice to see him all buffed up and looking cool, armored up, ready to go to town. Big old guns on him and stuff. He, he looks really really cool. So immediately, yeah, like I said, big old guns on this. I love the idea of using those larger gear pieces, two of those wheel pieces, and these massive wheels here, uh, the tires rather. Um, that just looks so cool. All the combination of parts there just looks awesome. It really does look like it would fire out some sort of like acid or sludge or slime or something like that, especially having that um, tubing sort of pumping it into those canisters on the back there. Great idea. And I think that's a great way of illustrating Toxic Reaper's uh, you know, power set of... I mean, that's kind of what it was with the original toy of, you know, sort of sh they shoot out like acid weapons, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and I think it's just a nice looking design there, uses those parts well. And there's something that's just very like aesthetically pleasing with that sort of bulkier look that almost kind of looks like muscles to a degree, to a degree. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a badass looking weapon that um, just sort of perfectly accents this sort of buffier aesthetic. I also enjoy a lot of the sort of system highlights on this mock, specifically the ones that are kind of forming the pecs on his uh, on his torso there. I like the fact that he does look like he has a more sort of ripped aesthetic with, you know, big old mus muscular pecs, and he kind of, I don't know, he just sort of has like a big old hole in the middle of his chest. He doesn't really have abs, but, uh, you know, he still looks really like, I don't know, he kind of looks like this sort of like unstoppable, like juggernaut, like ripped. He's, he's the Hulk, you know, or he's the juggernaut, you know, whatever. Um... It's, I think it's just a perfect aesthetic, and I think it makes sense for um, for villains as well. I, I kind of like the mental image of seeing the original 1.0 hero sets that were kind of tiny going up against this here, and so it's this idea of this sort of like David and Goliath story of these tiny, smaller heroes having to go against this unstoppable beast, but they use their cunning and their wits, and they manage to defeat it, you know, so I like that he's really gone ham on making this seem like just this unstoppable villainous force. I love it. It's really cool. I also quite enjoy the fact that his ankles are almost non-existent. They're tiny. Some people might be like, ah, oh, you should buff those out, it looks a bit weird. I can understand that perspective, but you know what I think? I think it's kind of cool. It's it's similar to, like, uh, an Achilles heel, you know? Maybe the villains uh, uh, have, you know, souped up their bodies and stuff, and they're just... They're, nothing can pierce their armor. They're just too strong and buff and powerful. But there's one weakness, the ankles. So if the heroes can hit the ankles, they can finally defeat him. Maybe, you know? Maybe. I don't know, it's kind of fun to kind of paint a picture, imagine a little story to go with this. That's at least what I like to do. So maybe that's a, a fun way to imagine that there, but it's also just kind of a unique aesthetic, a little bit different here and there. So nothing wrong with that. But overall, a pretty badass, awesome looking take on Toxic Reaper. Let's move over to the next one. This is Thunder, another Hero Factory villain, and this is built by WowBlock. And I feel like I'm going to say, wow, like Owen Wilson here, because this, this is a pretty nice take on Thunder. Again, going with that more sort of buffed up aesthetic. But I, again, I think that's perfect for the exact reasons I said before. My favorite little detail on this is kind of adding uh, a bit more of a sort of pronounced hunch to Thunder. If I recall correctly, the original set did have that sort of slight hunch to them. But uh, I like that he's really accented it here. And especially with the awesome part use of using that Hero Factory uh, torso piece there just sort of neatly slotting it in on the top there. It forms a perfect hunch, but just the sort of natural curves of it perfectly kind of slot around the head as well. And I don't know about you, I think that just looks cool. Um, really, really nice kind of shaping there and just sort of all locking it together seamlessly. It's gorgeous. So absolutely adore that there. Really, really nice just sort of flow with all the different pieces that they've put in there. It's great. 
I like too that uh, the, the the feet on this mock here, naturally those pieces are just very tiny, very sort of slimming. Uh, so it's nice to see them kind of buff it up a little bit there and make it uh, actually kind of fit in with the rest of the aesthetic here. So I like that. It's kind of nice to know that if you really want to use a specific piece on your binnacle, but you're like, ah, it's a little bit too big or it's a little bit too small, there might be some ways you can kind of maybe slim it down or sort of bulk it up in some fashion. Maybe it might be a bit harder to slim down a bulkier piece, short of cutting it or something, but don't do that. Don't, well, you can do that if you want. I'm not going to stop you, but, you know, think before you cut. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's nice to see you can kind of buff up smaller pieces like that and work it into the aesthetic of your mock. So really do enjoy that. I also enjoy how we sort of slightly changed up the arm design. Uh, the idea here of just sort of you know, one very typical arm and then the other one being the awesome sort of weapon that Thunder has there. I love that. I think it's just a nice looking aesthetic and I don't know just the way he's integrated the arm into the into the the weapon into the arm, excuse me. It just looks cool. There's just something very just pleasing about it. And I think all the different limbs on here, there's something so cool about them. They're so sort of bulky and buff and beefy. And and yet there's actually a good amount of posability that they have, which kind of blows my mind. I can't even really see where it would have any sort of joint to it to give it sort of, you know. Uh, like uh, knees or elbows or even, well, I can kind of see the elbows, but you know what I mean? It's just, it, it kind of blows me away. So that's just a really phenomenal sort of leg structure there um, that, that does have, it appears more limited posability, but it still has some. And to me, I thought that would be a more sort of static design there. So I think that's pretty cool. I also like when we look at the back here, the fact that it kind of looks like he has a jetpack, which it might just sort of be like exhaust ports or something. I don't know, but Kind of just like that mental image of it being like, oh, dang, this dude can fly. We didn't even see that coming. And mid-fight, mid, mid, flight, uh, mid fight, he takes flight. Uh, and the hero's are like, oh, God, what's going on? So um, I don't know. I think it's a cool aesthetic. And those jet engine pieces at the back there work really nicely. So lovely aesthetic all throughout this mock here. And just a great way of reinterpreting Thunder into, again, a more sort of beefcake-y design that uh, works really well. So love your work, good sir. On to the next mock. So this mark here is by GZB Mox, and this is called Stormer 3.5, The White Rhino. Cool name. I just like the idea of 3.5, because we had our 3.0 heroes, we had, you know, 2.0, we you kind of call them 4.0 as well, whatever you want to say. I like the idea of an in-between, a nice slot between the two. That's cool. It's a nice idea. But anyway, this is a badass revamp of Stormer, making him a little bit more sort of knight-like, giving him a lance awesome not enough lances on mocks what a great idea for a weapon very unique very fitting and i like the fact that it's blue kind of blends in with the hero core the spikes the head all that sort of stuff it's uh that's great it's really really cool so um lovely pop of color there and just just a nice solid lance design using that um drill piece there to sort of form the i don't know the the protective guard bit of the lance there very cool uh and i like the fact that he has a more sort of pronounced like poor weapon thing I don't fully know what it is, but it looks cool. It's a nice aesthetic, just a normal hand with a lance in it, and then this sort of more protective kind of gauntlet that maybe could be used as a bit of a shield or sort of slash vines away or something. I don't know, but uh, it's cool. It's really cool. Uh, he's also got some, like, nice knee pads and stuff like that, and all these uh, sort of buffed-out gunmetal armor additions, yeah, to me, gives a, a really solid-looking uh, kind of knight-like aesthetic, which surprisingly fits this sort of rhino mask look very well and i think it fits stormer very well as a character so i don't know it's just a really smart aesthetic choice here i think it works perfectly for the for the overall design so i, I really do dig that two other things i enjoy is a little subtle detail on the feet here uh, just at the back there he's included a few different studs and other system pieces just to kind of fill in some of the gaps there and just add a little you know slight little touch there i think it works i think it works surprisingly well so nice little addition but it goes a long way. And finally, he has a cool gun. And of course, it's using some of the um, stud shooters that did come on some of the Binocle G2 sets there. And I like that it's just a straight up gun using that sort of gun blaster style piece. You know, sometimes you did get actual kind of guns and things on Bionicle sets, but I like that he's built it to actually resemble that of a, a typical like pistol or something, you know, or a more sort of sci-fi pistol, but eh, it's the world of Hero Factory, it can be whatever you want it to be, you know, but I think it's just a fitting design. There's something just really kind of quaint and simple about it, but it works really well, and it also works well on this guy here. I mean, the Hero Factory heroes are kind of like cops. It kind of looks a bit like a gun that a cop would have or something, or at least a sci-fi cop, you know, whatever. Um, but, yo, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. And I like that, again, there's some blue in there that sort of works with the, the other weapon and other parts of the body. So just a really solid, decent-looking Hero Factory mock here. Really nice revamp of Stormer. Very cool. On to the next one now. This is by Student Scissors, and this is called Hero Recon Team Ava Aero. 
So I think, again, this color scheme is awesome. That gully mask and that sort of magenta, I guess, is the color there. I'm not as great with my friend's colors, but in pink. Um, that doesn't exist. I believe that's probably a Moldot mask recolor, uh, or... It doesn't say. Anyway, uh, that beautiful pink color combined with the teal, the black, and the white, lovely color scheme. I think that looks awesome. And I love the aesthetic choice, too, of having the mask be a different color. So it kind of looks like there is a pink dude inside some sort of awesome robotic suit that has gloves on, that has shoes on. So you don't see any of the other bits of their pink body, but you see the suit over the top of it. I just like that aesthetic. And it's a nice way of sort of incorporating these colors together here. I think it really works. And it really pops, too. So it's very nice. The little system additions here, whether that's the sort of uh, system hand design here using um, sort of those uh, black clip pieces as fingers, but then kind of branching it up into that teal piece there, just so it sort of flows into the, uh, the sort of uh, lower arm as well. I really like that. Just a nice way of kind of branching the design a bit and making it look like more sort of sci-fi armor of sorts. It's a, it's a really solid aesthetic. I also like the feet using some, oh, sorry, not, well, the feet are actually pretty cool using those little blue fins there as, uh, I don't know, just a little, little sort of subtle detail. It works really well. What I meant to say is I like the legs using some of those Galador pieces there. Very smooth, very nice aesthetic that works with the rest of this sort of sci-fi vibe for this mock. Lovely choice to do that there. Uh, but I think my favorite part is the inclusion of some of these windscreen pieces in teal that form the sort of shoulders. Just the four of them there on both sides, that just looks cool. Again, something so sci-fi about that, so just visually pleasing, it's it's really, really cool. So um, overall, phenomenal looking design, really, really solid, and just pretty cool. Next up, we have a mock by Ron Falkers, and this is Breakout Rocker. Breakout was probably the best wave of Hero Factory, in my opinion. Just, I don't know, I've been thinking about it recently, it's just a good wave. And uh, this is a good revamp of Breakout Rocker. I love the fact that he's given him almost a sort of post-apocalyptic vibe. The fact that he has this sort of like gunmetal additions on one side, but then the other side is a little bit more stripped back and greebled, like it's the armor's been torn off, or he's just kind of lost it, or it's in need of repair. I don't know, but it's a really nice like asymmetric design here. It's super, super cool. Uh, I also enjoy these weapons as well. That crossbow design is incredible. It uh, certainly doesn't look like it could actually fire, but it looks like a crossbow, and that's kind of all that matters, right? And he's even got a nice quiver on the back there. That's a very simple but effective quiver design using some of those, like, rubber connector pieces there. And just kind of slotted on the back there. It's, well, I think it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, and uh, obviously a great idea to use those spear pieces as a uh, crossbow, uh, cross, I can say it, I promise, crossbow bolts. I did it. Crossbow bolts. Say that 12 times fast. Crossbow bolts, crossbow bolts, crossbow bolts, crossbow bolts. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. I tried. It's tough. Uh, anyway, uh, I also enjoy the other weapon, which is that cool, like, hexagon shield thing, but it's also got some, like, spikes on it now, so it kind of looks like he could defend himself, but also, like, ram into people with it, and so, you know, it's a, it's a shield that hurts, but it's also a shield that protects. It's nice. Some other stuff I like on this is just the torso, the fact that he's used some of those minifigure gun elements there as little sort of greeble mechanical details. That's a really nice design, very simple, very, uh, sort of stripped back, not using a huge amount of pieces there, but it's nice, and... I just really like some of the greeble textures on this. Just very quaint, but it gets the job done. And uh, it's just a beautiful contrast between both sides there. So pretty cool. But yeah, a, a brilliant revamp of Rocker. And I still kind of like the idea of the whole concept of the, the breakout wave being that the villains broke out of the prison and the heroes had to fight them. So I kind of like the idea that all the, the villains started like a, a war and just, just messed up everything. And all the heroes have a more sort of post-apocalyptic vibe because... The world of Hero Factory has just gone to gone to hell, and they got to fix it, you know. Um, so I don't know. It's a surprisingly fitting aesthetic for that uh, wave of Hero Factory. I, I really, really like that there. So, love your work, good sir. Speaking of loving people's work, I've got to give credit where credit is due here because I messed it up last time. This is a mark called Bruce Saw Grinder, and it is made by the All Seeing Eye. But the concept was originally drawn up by Mr. MC Lego Boy. And just so I'm clear, made by the All Seeing Eye drawn by Mr. MC Lego Boy. That's exactly what the email says. I added a mister, but otherwise it's all correct. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to miss credit. That's a big thing for me. I always like to make sure that I say who the builder is and what the name is of the marks that I say, hey, I did not build these. These are other people's stuff and never like miscrediting stuff. So I definitely just want to drill that home. I apologize for going on about it, but hey, it's important to credit artists. All right, anyway, so story time. This mark here, uh, it, it goes back a bit. It goes back to... 10th grade, I think. Yeah. Um, 
I've told this story before, so apologies if you've heard this one, but hey, it's nice to be told a story. So sit back, cuddle up with a, with a, with a good blanket and some hot chocolate and listen to old Cassie tell a story. I was doing some community service uh, at school because in order to graduate, you had to do that for, I think it was like 12 hours or something like that. I might be wrong with the time, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, I partnered up with a friend of mine. We were both into Hero Factory at the time and Binocle in general. And uh, basically what we had to do is we had to go to a graveyard and we had to kind of clean up some of the different graves. And while we were there, we had to pick someone out and we had to study them and we had to sort of fill in some data about them, uh, learning about it from the library and then putting it on a database online. For the life of me, I couldn't find that database now. I have no idea what it was. I'm sure if I looked hard enough, I could find it. But right now, I have no idea. Um... Long story short, we went to the graveyard, we were looking around, and we found this one graveyard with a guy whose name I don't fully remember. I wish I knew it exactly, but it was something very similar to Bruce Sawgrinder. And at the time, both of us were like, damn, that is a badass name. That is cool. And both of us were like, yo, he could be a pretty cool Hero Factory like character. Um, I want to say we maybe changed the name a little bit because we didn't want to be like dishonoring Mr. Actual Bruce Sawgrinder. But again, like I said, I don't think Bruce Sawgrinder was the exact name, but it was something very, very similar. Um, so we researched and we did all the stuff on him that we were supposed to do, da 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 And then we made a, a hero, a, a Hero Factory hero, uh, and we, we were sort of talking about it as we were doing the project. We're like, yeah, he's going to be like lime and white, and he's going to have like yellow, and he's going to use the like Ferno, like goggles thing. And like, yeah, it's going to be cool. We'll give him a big buzzsaw, like it'll be awesome, you know? Um, and yeah, we briefly built him and I don't know what happened to the mock, but it's been taken apart, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was what happened. Um, and so I remember telling this story in Abyss episode ages ago and Mr. MC Lego Boy and Mr. All Seeing Eye, they were both like, yo, that's a great idea. Let's build it. So Mr. MC Lego Boy drew up the original source material. Uh, and then Mr. All Seeing Eye was like, I'm gonna build it. Cause I think he had a few more Hero Factory pieces, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's the story of Bruce Sawgrinder from cool dude that actually existed, maybe a little slight name change, to a story and a concept that we came up with uh, as kids, to a story on Biss, to being remade by some cool people. It's a, it's, it's, it's a circle of life. It's great. Um, so yeah, this is Bruce Sawgrinder, a mock that means a lot to me, uh, and it also apparently means a lot to a few other people, enough for them to make it, which is really cool. So it's, a, it's almost almost fan art, I guess you could say, maybe. Um, but hey, they've reimagined him brilliantly. This is, this is similar to what I what I saw him as, so that's awesome. Um, let's dive in. Let's talk about it. So pretty simple construction, your typical hero, hero, typical hero factory build, but that's historically accurate. That's great. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I love the shoulders. This nice addition here with the shoulders is great. Little like additional shoulder pads, you know, you can rough some people up, maybe ram into people quarterback style. That's cool. I like that. Uh, I like the fact that in some of these images, his saw his saw arm is tiny, and then other times it's big. You know, I don't know, that's his hero power. He can make it massive or smaller. That's the phrasing. Um, and uh, yeah, I like that, because it makes sense. If you're walking around Hero Factory HQ, you don't want to give someone a hug and then just decapitate them with your saw arm, and you're like, oh, sorry, I just didn't think that through. So it makes sense that he goes, I'm going to make it a bit smaller. It's not going to get in the way of stuff, you know? Because, I mean, he can only use one hand, right? It's all he can use to pick stuff up. The other one, it's, it's just a weapon, you know? Lovely addition there. I like that idea. Plus, buzz saws are just a cool idea for a weapon. Um, I also love the the shield as well. That's, that's quite fitting. You know, have a shield, buzz saw people in the face. It's a cool idea, and I think the shield actually works quite nicely. I like that it does have the Hero Factory logo on the front there. Seems fitting. Nice branding. It's good. Um, and yeah, he just looks cool. He just looks cool. I feel like I'm a little biased, but I think he's awesome. Um, no, nah, it's awesome. I love the idea of like shoulder pads there in a Hero Factory hero like that. Just kind of buffing it out a little bit, giving it some additional armor like that. Makes sense. Mr. Makuhiro approves, I'm sure. And Ben approves. I like this a lot. So, yeah, nothing wrong with doing that yourself. Why not come up with a cool Hero Factory canon character concept or fanon, fan canon, whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, yeah, you know, come up with a cool name, come up with a cool concept, pick out an interesting weapon choice, um, play around with the different colors from all the Hero Factory sets, and just build a pretty stock standard hero like this. Uh, maybe give them some slight additions like, you know, the shoulder armor or whatever else, and just have a cool character and maybe come up with a backstory. Who knows? It could be fun. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's the next step. Someone's got to write some fan fiction for Mr. Saw Grinder. Um, some, some PG fan fiction. No, no, no. This is, this is, this is a family friendly show. We're going <laughs> to keep it, keep it good. 
Um, and then I'll do a dramatic reading of it and I'll make a video with it. It'll be a great time. So, hey, I challenge you, someone do that. Um, I mean, I could do it, but like, I'm going to be the one reading it. That's just more work. I can't write and read. I'm going to, you know, we'll see what happens here. So, but yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. Um, quick side note, and heck, if this mock leads to more stuff coming out, uh, even further, great. The legacy of Bruce Sawgrinder continues. I, I would love to do a dramatic reading of some Bionicle story and make it a video. I would love to do that. The issue is I don't want to pick out any of the actual Bionicle story and read it because I can't, you know, like it's, that's like, like, I have some Bionicle books. My plan was to read them and post them on Patreon. The issue with that being, eh, it's someone's work. I can't just read it myself and post it and make money from it, right? So if someone has fan fiction that they've written or knows someone who has fan fiction and I get the approval and stuff like that, I will happily post a Bionicle story reading on the channel and I'll, I'll edit it. I'll put sound effects in it. I'll do voices. It'll be great. I was once an actor, you know, I still act. So this is, it'll be good quality. I promise. So that's just, I'm putting out the call. But anyway, this is a, this is a show about mocks, not about appealing to the future. But Hey, if that, if that gives you inspiration, that is what the show's about. So maybe everything's coming up. Millhouse. We'll have to decide or you'll have to decide. We'll wait and see. Anyway, Thank you to Bruce Sawgrinder. Thank you to Mr. All-Seeing Eye. Thank you to MC Lego Boy. And thank you to all the builders in this episode. It's important to note, it's almost February. And you know what that means. It's HF Feb. February, H- Hero, Hero February, whatever you want to call it. There's, it has many names. Um, so heck, get ready to build some Hero Factory mocks or villains. Have a good time. All that stuff. Wow, it's the perfect time for it, isn't it? Or you can start early. Why not build some heroes now? Or even build them after February. Whatever. It'll be a good bit of fun, that's for sure. So, yeah, play around, build your heroes, have a good time, and hopefully this episode gave you some early inspiration for it. Thank you very much for listening. There'll be links in the description to all the mocks you saw in today's episode, except for Mr. Bruce Sawgrinder. That one, there's no actual links. This was just a submitted email, which doesn't have any social media, unless they post it online. We'll have to wait and see. Um, otherwise, uh, there's also links in the description to my own social media, so you can check out some of the mocks that I'm building there. Uh, see what I've got going on over on the Instagrams, the Flickers, and the Facebooks, all that stuff. Uh, additionally, if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show, you can do so through the submission email. It's on your screen. It's also in the description below. Send me whatever you can in an email and I'll do my best to put it in an episode when I can. And, uh, yeah, most importantly, have a good day. I hope you, you build something and you just have a good time and something makes you smile because that's, that's really important, isn't it? So thank you for watching. Happy building. Bye for now.